in the topic called as the pathology of hemodynamics we are going to discuss about our first module which is the edema edema is nothing but accumulation of excess fluid in the interstitial tissue space so whenever the fluid in the interstitial tissue space is increased or accumulated then we will call it as edema but for better understanding we need to know what exactly is the interstitial compartment remember that the interstitial compartment is also called as tissue space which means that surrounds the tissue cells as you can see in this image you can see the cells and the surrounding is the fluid the fluid what you are seeing over here is called as interstitial fluid present in the interstitial compartment so whenever the fluid at the interstitial tissue space which is called as the interstitial fluid is increased then we will call it as edema actually what is the importance and what is the role of this interstitial fluid so this interstitial fluid actually provides the immediate micro environment that allows the movement of ions proteins and nutrients across the cell barrier so the edema occurs mainly due to increased capillary hydrostatic pressure or diminished colloidal osmotic pressure okay whenever there is an increase in the capillary hydrostatic pressure or whenever there is a decrease in the colloidal osmotic pressure that leads to resulting in increased interstitial fluid this is the main cause for the development of edema and remember here that edema occurs when total plasma proteins are less than 5 grams per deciliter what is the normal range the normal range is the 6 to 8 grams per deciliter that is the normal range of plasma proteins but if the plasma protein concentration decreases in the blood that is less than 5 grams per deciliter then edema occurs or we can say not all the plasma proteins we can also explain by only taking the reference of albumin whenever the albumin concentration in the blood is less than 2.5 grams per deciliter what is the normal range the normal range is 3.5 to 5 grams per deciliter but whenever the concentration of the albumin in the plasma that is in the blood is less than 2.5 grams per deciliter then edema develops so this is the golden rule always you need to remember that edema develops because of increased in the capillary hydrostatic pressure or decrease in the colloidal osmotic pressure especially in vast majority of the cases edema develops because of decrease in the protein concentration inside the blood you may calculate it as the total protein or only by taking the reference of albumin what we discussed earlier now let us see about uh, the physiology of the normal fluid exchange so what is the role of hydrostatic pressure in the capillaries let us see in this animation over here what is the role of hydrostatic pressure in the capillaries this hydrostatic pressure actually tries to force the fluid from the capillaries into the interstitial space the role of capillary hydrostatic pressure is to bring fluid from the capillary into the interstitial space that's the reason i already mentioned that whenever the capillary hydrostatic pressure is increased more fluid is drawn towards interstitial space responsible for the development of edema so this is called as outward driving force 
the capillary hydrostatic pressure is called as outward driving force because it is driving the fluid from the vascular compartment into the tissue compartment. That is the role of capillary hydrostatic pressure. Now, what is the role of hydrostatic pressure in the interstitial spaces or interstitial tissues? So, hydrostatic pressure in the interstitial tissues tries to force the fluid from the interstitial space into the capillaries. That is called as inward driving force. Capillary hydrostatic pressure is called as outward driving force. Hydrostatic pressure in the interstitial tissue space is called as inward driving force, which tries to kick out the fluid from the interstitial compartment into the vascular compartment. That is the main role of uh, the hydrostatic pressure in the interstitial space. Now, after discussing about the hydrostatic pressure, let us talk about the osmotic pressure. First, let us talk about the osmotic pressure in the capillaries. What is the role of osmotic pressure in the capillaries? Osmotic pressure in the capillaries tries to keep fluid in the capillary itself. It is not trying to kick out the fluid out of the capillary. Right? What is the capillary hydrostatic pressure is doing? It tries to kick the fluid out of the vascular compartment that is into the tissue compartment. That is the reason I am calling it as outward driving force. But what is the osmotic pressure in the capillaries that keep fluid in the capillary? That is the reason the capillary osmotic pressure in the capillaries is called as inward driving force. In the same way, if we talk about the osmotic pressure in the interstitial tissues, it tries to keep the fluid in the interstitial space. That is the reason it is called as outward driving force because it is outside the vascular compartment. That is the reason we are calling it as outward driving force. So, if you recap once again, the capillary hydrostatic pressure is called as outward driving force and the osmotic pressure in the capillaries is called as inward driving force. Right? In the same way, if you talk about uh, hydrostatic pressure in the interstitial tissue is called as inward driving force, but the osmotic pressure in the interstitial space is called as outward driving force. So, at the arterial end of the capillary, the hydrostatic pressure is 32 millimeters of mercury, but while at the venous end, it is 12 millimeters of mercury and the osmotic pressure of the capillaries is 25 millimeters of mercury. You have to remember these values to understand the like concept behind the development of edema. So, what is the outward driving force at the arterial end of the capillary that is 32 minus 25 is equal to 7 mm of Hg. So, outward driving force at the arterial end of the capillary is 7 millimeters of mercury. In the same way, the inward driving force at the venous end of the capillary is 25 minus 12 which equal to 13 millimeters of mercury. So, you can say that the inward driving force at the venous end of the capillary is equal to 13 millimeters of mercury. So, now let us talk about what about uh, the major determinant of the colloid osmotic pressure. The major determinant of colloid osmotic pressure in humans is albumin. This is the MCQ point. What is the major determinant of the colloidal osmotic pressure is albumin. It is mainly because of low molecular weight and high concentration in the blood. So, this is the MCQ point what you will face in the exam. And what is the main function of plasma osmotic pressure? 
the main function of the plasma osmotic pressure to keep fluid within the vascular system which means it prevents the leakage of the capillaries from the vascular compartment into the tissue compartment right so that is the reason you have to remember that the osmotic pressure in the capillary the main function of the plasma osmotic pressure in the capillaries is to keep the fluid within the capillaries itself which means by preventing the leakage from the blood into the tissues thus it prevents the development of edema so this is what you need to know about uh, the hydrostatic pressures as well as osmotic pressures